I'm Jason Compton, and I'm here with Pick Up the Phone Booth and Die for Dialogue, the conversion nobody needed into a language tremendously over-engineered for the purpose. Pick Up the Phone Booth and Die was one of the best joke games to come out of the interactive fiction or text adventure renaissance of the mid-1990s, and I have converted it to the dialogue language created by Linus Akeson. I first learned about dialogue while researching another one of Linus's projects, which was Zugma, a program that uh, let Commodore 64s play the newer games that were being created in in form, one of the languages that can output the old-style Infocom playable games. And I learned about this dialogue language, which works very differently than Inform. It works very differently than Zill, the Zork implementation language that you can see me talking a little bit about on the 8-bit show and tell channel. I am not a programmer, uh, or at least not, not a very good one. And languages like Inform that look like C just don't work very well in my brain. I, I just I can't really wrap my head around them enough to make them do much of anything. But uh, oddball languages uh, like Zill, uh, I can sort of understand. Uh, dialogue, I can follow even more, uh, although there are definitely some, some things about it that I don't understand yet. But I wanted to give myself a, a learner project for dialogue. Now, when I was learning how to use the Zill language, I chose the 10 Cave Adventure, which was a 10-line adventure programmed in BASIC for the Sinclair ZX81. But I wanted to do something different with dialogue, and I stumbled across the idea of converting Pick Up the Phone Booth and Die, which was published in 1996. There's a phone booth in the middle of a town square, and you're told that if you pick it up, you will die. And that felt like uh, a, a nice, tidy, compact little world that I could play with. The problem was that unlike the 10 Cave Adventure, where I could see the, the basic code and Robin Harborn made it even easier to understand when he did his own port of it to Commodore Basic, uh, with, with Pick Up the Phone Booth and Die, the original author who goes by Rob Noise or Spatula he said years and years ago that he had lost the source code, so it's just not out there. So what I ended up doing was I disassembled Pick Up the Phone Booth and Die using the TXD tool into about 7,700 lines of Z Machine assembly code. Now that sounds like a lot to... Uh, invest in a joke project to try to learn a language that I probably won't know how to use. But it wasn't so bad. And it wasn't so bad because really the first 7,200 lines or so are just the, the parser, the, the game world, stuff that doesn't change from game to game and that I didn't need to worry about because the dialogue compiler and standard library were going to handle it for me. So I really only had to look at about 500 lines of code beginning here at about line 7200. And because pick up the phone booth and die is so simple and straightforward, I didn't have to look that hard. I could really just follow the text strings and see what was going on, like what I would need to care about. So for example, this section here is very clearly dealing with praying. You can see, you know, you don't have to know uh, what the, the, the machine code here, the, the Z machine uh, assembly language is doing in order to understand, okay, some action has happened, we're making a random choice, and these random choices have are relating to prayer. So it's easy. I know that's going to be uh, the prayer command. There are only a very few uh, actions that matter in Pick Up the Phone Booth and Die. There's really only one object other than the player to interact with, that being the phone booth itself. So it was not hard at all to scroll through these, uh, you know, about 500 lines or so and see what was actually unique to Pick Up the Phone Booth and Die, or just Booth. Well, I think we'll just start calling it Booth from here on out. Uh, see what was unique to Booth, what we needed to care about, like these responses here dealing with uh, what happens after we we push it or pick it up or uh, pull it onto us, which are kind of the, the three the three ways the game can end. Uh, either picking it up, which you're not supposed to do, pulling it, which is even worse, or pushing it over, which ends up, uh, which is your, your victory condition. So there wasn't a whole lot to deal with. 
So I'm going to show you just a little bit of the dialogue source code here. Uh, I will readily admit I was uh, cribbing madly from the Cloak of Darkness code example that's provided with dialogue. I was reading through the uh, very easy to follow manual. I say easy to follow for somebody who is not a logician and programmer, but I could still uh, get what the author was, was trying to tell me most of the time. Uh, so by, by bashing those two together, you know, really just banging rocks together and uh, working from the list of text strings and, and actions that I knew I needed to include, I was able to get a uh, working and I'm going to call it about you know 98% complete conversion of pick up the phone booth and die or pick up the phone booth and dialogue if you'll allow the pun. Uh, I was able to put that together in less than 24 hours uh, start to finish. Uh, so at the top of the file here, I'm just uh, following the example. These are the uh, the text strings that let the game uh, declare the, the banner, which is kind of the standard part of beginning an Infocom style or Z Machine style text adventure, uh, where I'm just declaring the, the name, who I am, uh, where the game came from. Uh, there's this string here that uh, uh, identifies the game as a unique piece of interactive fiction that came out of the IF community some years ago to try to uh, keep a handle on the uh, really impressive volume of you know, hundreds and hundreds or if not thousands by this point of, of games out there. And then I've added in uh, comments here that just explain what's different about this game versus the one that you can go out onto the IF archives and, and play today. Uh, there are a couple things that I found that uh, were that had text strings to support them but didn't seem to work in the original booth we'll talk about that when we get there and just a few things that i just haven't gotten to yet uh we include a score uh, because the game does award 100 points when we push the phone booth over that's the the victory condition uh, dialogue is clearly not trying to uh, slavishly implement the old Zork and adventure styles of gaming. Uh, scores are supported, but not in as much detail as the older games did. There's no support for breaking down, uh, no built-in support in the standard library anyway, for breaking down how those points were scored and what ranks those give you, which actually leads to a little bit of the code that I had to do later on. Uh, this is the intro that plays when the game starts, and then we get into the, the core concept of dialogue, which is that everything in the game uh, everything in the game code is an object, but the objects are very generic. In other words, there's not a, a notion of creating a specific type of object. You just declare an object with a with a little hashtag expression, and then from there, everything you tell the code about that object builds it up into what you need it to be. So it's very flexible in that way. Uh, you're not bound into a lot of uh, obligatory uh, syntax elements. It also means that if you uh, want patterns to follow, you might be flailing around a little bit uh, because you, you don't have those, those rigid structures. But for what I needed to do, it was nice and simple. So the town square is a room. Uh, it's a singleton, which means that uh, we would always want the article the used to refer to it. That really doesn't come in uh, uh, to play with in this game. I took the name the town square directly from the old game code, brought the game the description uh, around uh, from the uh, from the original zap code, and this notice command uh, makes it so that the the booth gets a special kind of description in these z machine type games typically if there's an object that you can interact with there are a few different ways that it can show up in the area description it may just say there is a phone booth here but this game has a different way of describing the phone booth it wants it to have a special description when you see it and typically that's done when an object needs uh, a little glitz and glamour around its description so when we get to the booth object you'll you'll see how that works uh, this is one of the uh, the additions that i made the uh, the original booth game had this text string about uh, not being able to leave the town square. Uh, there is some profanity uh, in the code that, that gets a little spicier than this. Uh, incidentally, I'm, I'm just uh, being true to the the source material. Uh, so this uh, this confined message was in the booth code, but it doesn't actually seem to be wired up. Uh, I'll 
bring it up here. Uh, so there's this string, this uh, S028, you're confined to the town square, but that, that that string's not actually called from anywhere. It only shows up in this one location. So I decided to go ahead and uh, and add it to the dialog implementation of Booth. And I'll show you when we when we compare the two different versions that, uh, yeah, even though that string was in the the inform original, it doesn't actually work that way. Uh, there's this little sequence here. In the original, pick up the phone booth and die. When you push over the phone booth, you get one more move before the game ends to, to take one extra action. Uh, I have, uh, by, again, copying straight out of the example docs, I've come up with this this little uh, one, one extra move ticker uh, that uh, does a little bit of math lets you take one action and then plays the this this victory message uh, talking about the uh, sort of the the sad the sad dying groans of the phone booth uh, and the uh, the recorded voice of the operator the person that we're going to marry someday and that's all there is to that top section that's talking about the town square I'm actually probably speaking about that incorrectly because not all of those elements uh, are are truly attached to the oh no they are these are all attached to the town square I think I start uh, I think I start losing the plot in terms of good dialogue coding hygiene a little later on but uh, the next section we define the booth um, it's the name is the phone booth this is another little addition uh, I decided to make it possible to refer to the phone booth using the the graffitied name that we read about if we examine the phone booth. It's edible because in the original booth, if you try to eat the booth, it says, okay, well, first you'll have to pick it up, but then by picking it up, you die. And uh, making it an openable item also just made it a little bit easier to implement some of the other responses. This appearance section, this ties back to that notice uh, command or attribute that we, uh, we had in the town square. By noticing the booth, we're saying that, okay, we want something different to appear than just there is a phone booth here. And in this case, we see that there are two different ways to notice it depending on the state of the game. If the booth has been pushed, if it's been knocked to the ground, then we see that it's a fallen phone booth crumpled on the ground. Otherwise, we see it described as a shiny metal phone booth sitting in the center of the square. And uh, similarly, the full description, which we get if we examine it, is different based on whether it's been pushed over or not. And from here, the code really just gets into, because uh, here we've, we've done all the things that the, the game really needs. We've set up that the, uh, the game ends after we push it over. We've set up that there's different conditions uh, for responses based on whether the, the booth has been pushed over or not. And really, the, the remaining lines of the code just deal with the different actions that were implemented in the original booth and uh, the but just ending the game if we need to, uh, like here, if we take the booth. Um, notice you can you can safely try to take the booth if the booth has already been pushed over, but if it hasn't, uh, you think you might be able to handle it, and you can't, and it knocks you over, uh, crushes you, and the game ends. And uh, that similarly happens if you pull it onto yourself. And everything else just, uh, just deals with the the different types of actions that uh, have a special response, either because it's dealing with the phone booth or reflecting uh, Rob Noy's uh, sense of humor, I like this attack command. That's not the it's not the inform library standard. Down here, uh, because dialog doesn't deal in score ranks, I basically just copied and pasted the score routine from the standard library and added in a very, very uh, crude and hard-coded way of assigning the two different ranks that are available in the game, because there's only two scoring actions, or one really, there's two score states, either having zero points or 100 points. Uh, it does mean that uh, if you if you ask for your score before you've taken any action, you do see that the game calls you a total and utter loser squished to death by a damn phone booth that is original to... Uh, to the original booth code, I didn't, uh, I didn't change or improve it here. And there's a, just a few bits at the bottom that include some code that uh, uh, things I found in the original code, strings I found in the original code that I haven't wired up yet. 
I want to talk just a little bit about the, the two games compared to one another. So in this directory, you can see the original booth file, which is about, uh, about 44K. It was created with uh, Inform 5, which was one of the earliest, if not the earliest edition of the Inform language uh, that was available to the public. And then my version is the PUTPBAD file uh, created with Dialog. And you can see that it's almost twice as long because Dialog is uh, a much more high-level language. It's doing a lot more convenient stuff in the background. Uh, there's nothing better uh, about playing the Dialog version other than, I guess, uh, if you want to make the argument for uh, implementing a couple of things that the Inform version started to but then didn't finish. Uh, there's nothing better about it. There's definitely things you can do in Dialog that are not nearly as easy to do in Inform 5. Um, the other cost of that, apart from a little bit of disk space, is that uh, the game runs a lot slower. Now, here on a modern, you know, even you know, six six years old as it is a uh, desktop computer here, uh, we won't notice those differences. But on, let's say, a Commodore 64, the experience would be notably different because the dialogue code is doing much more in the background. So I want to bring up just the original game here uh, with the Frotz interpreter. Uh, you'll see some of the messages that we saw earlier uh, in the code, and so you were taken from this place to another place, etc., etc. Pick up the phone booth and die. There's the phone booth. There's a warning message, which is interesting, uh, a little disagreement between the compiled binary and this version of the Frotz interpreter, uh, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't really affect the gameplay. Uh, so you can see here, as I mentioned, if we ask for our score, uh, we're, it says we're squished to death even though we haven't been. If we try to leave the town square, we just can't go that way. It doesn't block our movement with the custom message. If we examine the booth, we see that. If we try to examine uh, the graffiti name, that doesn't work. And if we push the booth, we give it a mighty push, it will bother us no more. Our score has gone up by 100 points. And uh, actually, let's try opening the booth. Uh, the act of pushing the phone booth has opened it up, in a sense. And we get the, the dying groan of the phone booth. We've won. We feel good about ourselves. We get the, uh, the breakdown of the score, we, because Inform 5 made that easy to do. I'm pretty sure the, that full score capability was just built into the language. And that's pretty much all there is to pick up the phone booth and die, the original version. You can pick it up, you can pull it. Those are the, the two other ways to end the game. And that is also true for our version, which, for pun purposes, uh, we have called pick up the phone booth and dialogue, this unnecessary port. There's the phone booth. And what we can do in this version is we can ex we can refer to it as a booth double zero. If we ask for our score because I've added in that ranking system or you know, just kind of hacked in a couple of uh, extra responses, uh, we have zero points out of a maximum of 100, giving us the rank again of, of having been squished to death, even though it hasn't happened yet. Uh, I want to just show the uh, let's show the the eat uh, outcome. We first attempt to take the phone booth. We grunt with all our might, heave the phone booth onto our shoulders. Looks like we're going to be able to lift it. It falls. We've died. I enjoyed this project. I've enjoyed sharing this project. I've put it out there on GitHub where I welcome your suggestions, enhancements, improvements. I don't recommend you look at this as a great example of dialogue coding, but the fact is there just aren't that many examples of dialogue code out there right now. Hopefully this will inspire some new action in that area. I'd be interested to see someone take on the Cloak of Darkness Plus, uh, as found in uh, the Zilf packages, uh, since that's got some advanced code concepts that might help rock bangers like me uh, get some good examples to build off of. Thank you very much for joining me for this one, and I hope to see you again in another video.